Okay, everybody, today we are going to demo projecting our spatial data in ArcMap. Okay, so we've been learning about different ways of loading in our data to ArcMap. I'm going to do a little bit of a shorthand here. Uh, instead of using ArcMap or our Add Data button, I'm just going to drag and drop. Okay, so we're going to start with a shape file of cities of the world. We'll load in states and provinces and a graticule. Okay, another shape file representing uh, lines of latitude and longitude, so parallels and meridians spaced at five degrees uh, across the globe. Okay, so a couple things stand out to us immediately looking at this map first. Um, our data is at a, we are viewing the map at a relatively small scale. Okay, so as we zoom in and out, a little yellow window pops up and tells us what that scale is. Uh, so we are currently at 1 to 125 million. It's very small. As we zoom in, that number decreases. So we're now at 1 to 50 million. You can also tell and change your map scale up here in this window. Okay, so we actually happen to know that this data, which we've worked with before, is best viewed or designed for the 1 to 10 million map scale. Uh, and as you can see, it looks, we still get a lot of detail here. Um, but we want to look at the whole world, so we are just going to uh, go ahead and zoom back out. Now, the other thing we notice loading in this data is that we are working with a Cartesian grid. Okay, we know that because our graticule is evenly spaced. Okay, uh, the distance between lines of longitude here, or meridians, is the same as the distance between the lines of latitude or parallels. Okay, we've got squares here. Alright, we know, however, that that's not a very good and faithful representation of reality. We know that lines of longitude are par parallels. The distance between them actually decreases as we head towards the poles, such that when we're at the North Pole, we're walking around. Uh, we're walking around. Uh, you know, we can walk right around the uh, the meridians. Okay, the distance between them is very small, a matter of feet at the poles. Okay, so. Uh, we want to be able to project our data. Okay, ArcMap by default loads us into the geographic coordinate system here, the Cartesian grid, um, but we want to project them. Okay, so first thing we want to do though is to, before we project the data, is to understand a bit more about what this data is. So we're going to right click and learn about this data by going to the properties menu. Uh, we're going to look at the source tab here and we're going to learn uh, that the data here, these states and provinces, the coordinates comprising those shapes are stored in the WGS1984 geographic coordinate system. Now we know that uh, geographic coordinate systems are comprised of three things. Angular measurements, okay, that's how we get our lat long, okay, and in this case we're just talking about latitude and longitude in terms of degrees. They're comprised of a origin by which we measure those angles. So in this case, the origin is the prime meridian of, uh, that runs through Greenwich, England. And they're comprised of datums. So in this case, it's we're using the WGS 1984 datum, um, which, as we know, is also just a way of talking about the reference ellipsoid, the shape of the Earth we're assuming uh, when we make those coordinate calculations, okay? And it just happens to be the case that the rest of our data is also storing its coordinates uh, in the WGS 1984 system, okay? That's going to be helpful as we go to project this data. So there are many different ways of projecting uh, our data. For our purposes, we're going to project it on the fly. Now, you'll learn through the tutorial different ways of defining uh, a projection. Uh, right now, we are going to 
project the entire data frame on the fly. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to select our data frame here and go to its properties. Okay, data frame is just uh, the arc map environment we are currently working in. And when we load its properties, uh, we go to the coordinate system tab. And we are brought to the, it's brought to our attention that uh, our data are in WGS in 1884. That geographic coordinate system, which is one that is appropriate for the world. Okay, that is all well and good, but we want to be working in a projected coordinate system. We want to project our data. So we're going to open this folder up. And since we are working with the world here, uh, we are going to select that folder. There's a lot of different projections here. Um, for our purposes, we're going to work with something already familiar to us, which is the Mercator projection. Okay, it's going to tell us a little bit about that projection. Okay, including what it assumes our data, uh, our coordinate data, are stored in. And in this case, it assumes WGS 1984, which is the case. So we should have no problem projecting this data. Okay, a little more detail about what kind of shape of the Earth it's expecting and so forth. So we'll go ahead and apply this Mercator projection. And voila! Okay, so as you can see, we are now looking at a uh, Mercator view of the world. Uh, and we know uh, a lot of things about this already. We are preserving the shapes of small regions, um, but in fact we are distorting area. Okay, so one tell for that is the size of Greenland here is much bigger than it really is on the globe and in the world. Uh, it looks as big as Africa, it really isn't. Okay, to drive home that message, uh, I'm gonna actually do some measurements of this. So we zoom in to Ontario here. Okay, we can actually measure this. So we've done a little bit of work with the measuring tool here. Okay, we can measure our features. So this is gonna measure Ontario. We get a number 2,626,000, so on and so forth, square kilometers. Is what it's measuring the uh, area of Ontario to be in, a, in this Mercator projection. Okay, we're gonna see that holds up against other projections. We assume it won't because we know other projections can preserve area, but we're actually gonna uh, prove that is the case. So let's change the projection again. So this time around, let's try something uh, more appropriate to preserving area. So let's try the mall wheat projection. Okay, it doesn't tell us it's an equal area projection, but we just happen to know that already. We've seen this before, again, assuming we're working in the WGS 1984 system. So let's apply that. Okay, definitely see a lot of changes here. Okay, the lines between uh, our meridians here are actually becoming closer as we approach the poles. Okay, we might be distorting some shapes, um, but we are preserving area. Okay, so let's show how that's actually the case. So again, we're gonna measure our feature, which is the polygon of Ontario here. And it's showing us that it's 1,076,000, which if you Google it, is the correct number. Okay. Now, we've preserved area, um, but in some cases we want to try to preserve shape and area at the same time as much as possible. In some cases we want to uh, parameterize our projection to a specific region of the world. Okay, so let's try one more projection here. All right. And in this case, we want to zoom in a bit on North America. So we're going to get ourselves out of this world-based projected coordinate system and look at specific continental projections. Okay, North America. And we're going to choose 
the North American Lambert conformal conic. Okay, this is a conic family of projection. It's conformal, meaning shape preserving. Lambert's the guy who invented it, and it is parameterized to focus on North America. What does that mean? Well, you can see here that we've set our standard parallel to 20 degrees north. Uh, and since this is a secant case, meaning we are intersecting, our cone is intersecting uh, our reference globe at, in two places, we have a second standard parallel, and that is at 60 degrees north of the equator. Okay, we're also going to run our central meridian uh, through 96 degrees west, or negative 96 degrees. Okay, and that's um, going to provide a straight line for us there, that meridian. Okay, now, since this is a North American-based projected coordinate system, it's assuming that we're working, that our data, the coordinates of our spatial data, are stored in the North American uh, coordinate system in 1983, which is based on the North American datum of 1983, which in turn uh, assumes an ellipsoid uh, that is the geodetic, geodetic reference uh, survey of 1980, and that's the ellipsoid or spheroid shape that this datum is uh, comprised of. Okay, but we know that actually our data are in the WGS 1984 coordinate system. So let's see what happens. We get a warning that says, hey, I thought you were working in one coordinate system. You're not. I can't do the math uh, to make that uh, to make this projected. In fact, it can, uh, but we just need to tell it to make that transformation. Okay, so we need to tell it to convert from our WGS 1984 data into the 1983 uh, coordinate system so that we can then appropriately project the data. Okay, and it gives us a number of different options for doing that, uh, and this is the one that makes sense. Okay, so we will go ahead and make that transformation, and we have projected the data. Okay, so you can tell that uh, we have this straight up and down line meridian here. That is the central meridian we told it to set with that projection around negative 96 degrees or 96 degrees west. Okay. I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, we know that our, since we are working in this uh, parameterized projection that told us that uh, the uh, standard parallels are centered around 20 degrees north and 60 degrees north, well, we know that distortions are minimized uh, around these uh, parallels. But we know that 20 degrees north is uh, further down here, away from Canada. If we want to get something Canada specific, we can parameterize it even more. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, we're working in this projection right now, but we can actually copy and modify it by click, right clicking. And it gives us the opportunity to change the value of these parameters. So let's just go ahead and set the central meridian to 100 degrees west. Okay, our standard parallel further north to say 45 degrees and 60 will work fine for the other standard parallel. And we'll say our latitude of origin is at 50, okay? We'll go ahead and apply that. That creates a new custom projection, a separate folder. And then we will go ahead and apply the projection itself, okay? So a little bit has changed here in that our central meridian is now uh, 100 degrees west. Okay, and we've also uh, set different standard parallels here. So let's go ahead and measure uh, our area of Ontario under this projection. Now we know that we are working with the Lambert conformal conic. We know that conformal projections do not preserve area. But we also know that we parameterized the projection such that um, we are trying to minimize distortions within 
a specific region. Okay. We can see now that um, unlike the previous conformal projection we were working with, McCater, which said uh, the area of Ontario was something like two and a half million square kilometers, this conformal projection parameterized to Canada. Um, it doesn't get it right, um, but it definitely minimizes that distortion. Okay, so it's saying that we have uh, that the area of Ontario is 1,065,000 square kilometers. Okay, so this has been a walkthrough of how to set up projections on the fly to assess and measure their distortions, and we'll continue talking about this on.